Morning, my name's Steve and this is the Seaside Allotment Channel and it's a big day on Jenny's plot today because we're mulching these two beds. We do this every year, spent mushroom compost about one and a half inches thick. So this bed is going to be the brassica bed. Last year it was the squash bed, we alternate the two. We're not able to do a full four year rotation but uh, or a three year rotation but this is the best we can do. Um, because this is going to be the brassica bed we've had field beans in it all over winter. We've harvested these field beans um, and they're an amazing crop. I've done a separate video about it, but basically they're like a spinach substitute that you harvest from about December through to the end of April, really. Um, and they're just amazing. They're so prolific. And I think we've taken 300 pounds worth of field beans off this bed, which basically pays for all the work on the plot for the whole year. And they improve the soil no end. That's one of the things I love about the field beans. You know, they, um, uh, bacteria on the roots fix nitrogen into little tiny nodules and those nodules gradually then release that nitrogen uh, into the soil and feed the plants, the brassica plants, throughout the season. But we have put also uh, seaweed meal and chicken manure pellets down on here and in the planting holes we'll also put Marshall's organic extra which is a kind of concentrated farmyard manure also composted with seaweed. So this bed from that end right up to the beam frame are going to be squash, mostly crown prints, some hurricane, um, butternut squash and a few trumpuccinos. And basically this ground's been prepared exactly the same. So uh, it's going to be mushroom compost, underneath the mushroom compost, chicken manure pellets, seaweed meal, and uh, Marshall's Organic Extra. The big difference on this one is it hasn't had the field beans. Uh, it had those the previous year. Um, but you can, with squash, you can kind of concentrate the nutrients in a smaller area. The important thing about this bed though, is to use up some of the space between the squash plants, because obviously they're, you know, one and a bit meters apart. We are going to put, um, little clumps of three or four sweet corn plants. Um, they need to grow in clumps. I've tested this out in the, in the polytunnel. A clump of three is absolutely fine for fertilization. Um, so little clumps all the way along. Uh, so that should make a big difference to the yield in here. One of the biggest problems that we have in the brassica bed is often cutworms and uh, you know they just nibble through the roots or the stems of the plants and they just wilt and die uh, but you also see them it looks like slug damage on the leaves so they obviously crawl up at night and start eating the leaves so i'm going to water in a nematode into this bed and i'm also going to water the actual plants in their pots um, and uh, so hopefully that should make a difference uh, it's a big problem we lost last year we lost about six plants, but the year before we lost about 15 plants. Um, it is one of, I think, one of the problems with no dig is that the beds are always, have always got plants in them or they've always got a compost mulch over them and they're never turned. And so the birds never get a chance to come in and work their way through the soil, eating all those little grubs. Um, but uh, anyway, hopefully with the nematodes, we can uh, work our way around it. This is the stuff we get, casing compost. So, a lot of barrowing. So after the first few barrow loads, it's worth just raking it out, checking that you're laying down the right amount. It's very, very light and fluffy, this stuff today. I like this rubber rake for almost every job that I do on the allotments. In fact, I don't even have a metal rake anymore because I'm never trying to disturb the soil. I'm just trying to distribute things evenly, evenly on top of the soil. Or just collect up debris or something like that off the soil. I think that's... Uh, looking about right and when you're loading your barrow with this stuff a fork is what you want to use 
it's uh, much easier oh, than uh, using a spade. And the only thing to bear in mind with spent mushroom compost is it's quite alkali. It's quite a bit of chalk lime in it. And uh, so it's perfect for a brassica bed. Not very good for potatoes. Although to be set honest, I actually put a mulch down here the first time we got this plot and we mulched the potato bed and we never we had the best crop of potatoes we've ever we've ever had. So but theory is potatoes don't like it. But perhaps as a mulch it's fine. The thing is with the mulch you're not actually digging it into the soil at all. The whole point is to create a layer on top of the soil. Anyway, that's done, I think. Whew, so we finished. So we managed to uh, have a bit of spare mushroom compost. So we cleared all the other little beds and uh, got all those mulched nicely. And yeah, it's, it's a long day actually, uh, but it reduces the workload on the plot so much. Hardly any watering required now hardly any weeding required um, you know it just really makes a massive difference um, and of course the plants absolutely seem to love it and you know as I said the important thing when you're growing um, sprouts and clets is to get really big tall plants and so you've really got to prepare the ground well for them um, otherwise you get you know probably half the harvest uh, that you get if you don't do the prep right. So. I'm going to call it a day now. <laughs> My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.